Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Time Travel. Now in today's episode, we're going to be traveling back to the year 1996 and taking a look at Windows 95. Well, not really. So yes, we are going to be taking a look at a component of Windows 95 today, but it's not going to be Windows 95 itself. As you can probably tell from the title, this video is going to be focusing on the Internet Explorer starter kit that came with certain versions of Windows 95, and this right here is one of those versions. You can see on the box right here, we got this nice red uh, marking that says Internet Explorer starter kit included free and Microsoft says this is a 2495 value. So what was this starter kit? What did it do for you? Well, you can probably tell by the name that it was intended to give you everything you needed to get started with using the World Wide Web. And the World Wide Web at this time was still a fairly new thing, especially from the eyes of the consumer because web browsers and the World Wide Web was still making its way into the homes of everyday people. And Internet Explorer was one of the web browsers that was offered uh, to consumers that they could use to browse and explore the World Wide Web. Now, it was not the very first web browser out there, uh, but it would eventually become the most popular one. And I talked briefly about this in my Netscape retrospective video. Netscape was another web browser that also was not the first web browser, but it eventually became the most popular one after it was released. But Internet Explorer soon began to really challenge it and it overtook Netscape because Microsoft was bundling this web browser with Windows and this is one of those versions right here. You can see up here at the very top there's this note that says includes Microsoft Internet Explorer. So you got a web browser, a fully working web browser that was very capable for free with your operating system and just because of that this is what most people ended up using when they bought a version of Windows that came with it. They didn't even consider Netscape, and especially because you had to pay for Netscape at this time. It was not free. So uh, people that already had a fully working web browser, they just stuck with it. And I talk a lot more about this in my Netscape retrospective video if you want to go check that out. But the very first version of Windows 95 did not come with a web browser at all. Internet Explorer existed in 1995, but the only way you could get it was by purchasing Microsoft Plus for Windows 95, which was a companion package that was sold alongside Windows 95, and this came with some enhancements to the operating system and some additional programs like Internet Explorer. And the version that comes with this, this specific version of Windows 95 came out in 1996, one year later, and it includes Internet Explorer 3.0, which was released that same year. And this down here at the bottom lets you know that it comes with the Internet Explorer starter kit, which was a standalone package as well. You could get this, and you can see that this is the box for it right here, but they also bundled it with certain copies of Windows 95, and this is one of those copies right here. So let's open it up and see what you would get. So obviously, like most uh, Microsoft software from this time, we're going to pull out this cardboard box here, open it up, and not only are we going to get our Windows 95 upgrade CD, but we're also gonna get the Microsoft Internet Explorer Starter Kit CD, which by the way, is still sealed, as you can see. And yes, we are gonna be opening this for the very first time in this video. Before we get to that though, let's take a look at what else we have. Obviously, we've got our standard registration card. We have our 15 hours free AOL insert, which is pretty cool to take a look at as well. And we've got our Windows 95 manual. But what we're interested in is this right here. This is your beginner's guide to Internet Explorer, the manual essentially for the Internet Explorer starter kit. But it's more than a manual because this contains a lot of useful information uh, about the web and how it works. It's got some terminology in here that would be very useful for somebody who knew nothing about this. And before we take a look at what's on this CD, I thought it would be cool to take a look at this booklet. Not the entire thing, but some of the more interesting parts of it. Because keep in mind, this was written for somebody who knew nothing about the World Wide Web. It has a lot of things in here that are essentially common knowledge today, but were new concepts at the time. If we open it up here, we can go on to the first couple of pages, and after we've got your support telephone numbers and all of that good stuff. And here's our little title page, and here are your contents right here. Then we get to this welcome page right here, and it says, Welcome to the Microsoft Internet Explorer Starter Kit. The Internet Explorer Starter Kit includes everything you need to connect to the internet and start browsing the World Wide Web in a matter of minutes. You'll soon be surfing, in quotes there, sending and receiving email, participating in news groups, 
chatting, also in quotes, with friends around the world, and even making phone calls over the internet. This book introduces you to Internet Explorer, a state-of-the-art web browser, sure, and the many extras that make it the browser of choice among discerning cyber citizens. Wow, that's something I've like never heard. A Beginner's Guide to Microsoft Internet Explorer is your source for detailed instructions on how to get started and where to go for advanced tips, tricks, and expert advice. So you'll notice a couple of things here. It's got these quotation marks around things like surfing and chatting. Now these are terms that we probably don't use surfing a whole lot anymore, but if you said surf the web at this time, you might be a little bit confused if you heard that and knew nothing about the World Wide Web. So they put this into quotes here to like say, oh, you're not actually going to be surfing like on the ocean on a surfboard. I just think that that's kind of neat. So what I think is really cool is it's got these, these are kind of some of the, the tasks that you can do on the internet, some of the things that you can do. So it talks about shopping, education, software, entertainment, publications, communications. If we go through here, uh, five easy steps to getting on the internet. This just explains, you know, what you'll need, how to install Microsoft Internet Explorer. Now it's worth noting that this version of Windows 95, the operating system itself didn't come with Internet Explorer. That would be later on, like Windows 98, for example, that came pre-installed with version 4.0 of IE. This version of Windows 95 did not, but it included it. You just had to put in this disk right here, but you still got it for free. And then it tells you some of the things that are on the CD, and we're gonna get into this in a moment. So we'll just skip this for now, but here's a brief list of uh, some of the stuff we're gonna be taking a look at. Now, what I also wanna show you guys is if we go to the back page here, I mean, it tells you, it talks about exploring the internet, using the links bar. I mean, again, really, really basic stuff. We all know how to type in addresses. We all know how to save bookmarks. We all know how to search. But these were all new things at this time. So it's got really detailed instructions on like how to use the links bar, how to use the address bar. It's just really interesting to see this stuff explained in so much detail here. So if we scroll through, we'll go to the very back, or I, say, I said scroll through like we're in a web browser. If we flip through the pages, glossary of internet terms. This I think is really interesting. We all probably know what, what most of these are. Maybe there are some people who might not know what like HTML is or what HTTP is, but you've probably seen HTTP or like the word, H, it's not really a word, the acronym HTML before but you might not know what it is, but it, it explains all of these terms in detail here. I'm certain we all know what an address is, what a browser is. Uh, DNS, maybe we all don't know what that is, but it explains what it is here. Domain name server, homepage, so we certainly all know what that is. Hyperlink is a term that it's just become shortened to link now. We don't really say hyperlink. Uh, so we've we've definitely shortened that term, but the proper term is hyperlink and those are obviously links that like the what you clicked on to, to get to this video that was a hyperlink, uh, but we probably don't really call it that much anymore. Uh, IP address, ISP, ISDN, start page, search page, surfing, which they actually define surfing here as the act of navigating the web by clicking hyperlinks. Yeah, pretty awesome. This was pretty cool to take a look at. So. What we're going to do now is for the very first time since this was manufactured, we're going to open up the Internet Explorer Starter Kit. So this, it doesn't say anything on the back here uh, about installing or like what is included on here. Like if we go up here, it just says important. You must accept the enclosed license agreement before you can use this product. If you do not accept the terms of the license agreement, you should promptly return the product for a refund refund right i did a whole video on this people who actually tried to get refunds from microsoft it didn't really uh, work out too well for them windows refund day check it out uh so yeah copyright 1996 obviously and here is the disc itself so let's see what we got here so here it says microsoft internet explorer starter kit the easy way to get on the internet and it says this contains microsoft internet explorer version 3.0 for windows 95 so pretty awesome guys right so what we're going to do is I'm going to fire up the $5 Packard Bell because that would be an appropriate computer for this video since it runs Windows 95. And uh, we're going to install this and we're going to see what else is on this disk. So let me go ahead and get that all set up and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, welcome back everybody. So here we are on the $5 Packard Bell. We're loaded into Windows 95 and we're ready to check out the Microsoft Internet Explorer Starter Kit. Now you'll notice that this copy of Windows 95 has Internet Explorer on it. This copy of Windows 95 that I installed on here is a restore copy. This was provided by Packard Bell, but I'm going to take out the disk right here 
and we're gonna pop it into the Packard Bell's CD drive, and we're going to, so here it is right here, IE Kit 95, and it looks like there is an auto run, here it is. So we're gonna check out more information first and see, so this is just the readme it looks like. So we're just going to install the starter kit, and we're gonna accept the license agreement, and so it says, would you like to select which optional internet components are installed? Yes, we do. So let's just get everything. So we're going to get internet mail, internet news, active movie, HTML layout control, and macromedia shockwave. That's a name you probably haven't heard in a while. And it will, there we go, installing. And there we go. So just like the manual told us, we have to restart our computer. So we'll say yes, and we will let the machine restart. And check this out. So we have a little intro video here. Now, I don't have speakers plugged into this machine, so if there's sound, we're not going to get it. <laughs> so That's unfortunate. But So it looks like it's going to be a full screen thing, which is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, it says, welcome, congratulations, you're just minutes away from cruising the web. And oh, it says, welcome in a bunch of different languages up there, pretty awesome. Sending email around the globe, participating in news groups, and chatting on the phone while sharing programs. Gosh, doesn't that sound exciting? The Microsoft Internet Explorer Starter Kit has everything you need to connect to the internet, including offering you a choice of internet service providers. About this CD, before you start exploring, make sure you know how to proceed. So let's see what they say about navigating the Starter Kit CD. So this is, okay, so here is your, you have to click the animated Internet Explorer icon to go back to the welcome page. And, okay, turning on and off, oh, it's just background music, okay. So you can turn on and off the background music by clicking the speaker icon in the lower right corner. Starting the Internet Explorer Starter Kit, it is automatically displayed after you install. You can return to it by, oh, you gotta put uh, the CD back in. Okay, so it's not gonna run without the CD. And you can exit by clicking exit, pretty self-explanatory. So we'll go back to the main screen. And uh, let's just go through these three steps. So let's let's learn how the internet works. How does it work? The online version, a beginner's guide to Microsoft Internet Explorer is your source for detailed instructions on how to use Internet Explorer for Windows 95 and Windows NT. It's the place to go for help in getting started and for advanced tips, tricks, and expert advice. Plus it explains the many extras that make Internet Explorer the browser of choice among discerning cyber citizens. I believe we, we heard that same phrase in the uh, manual there, the little intro booklet. So you don't have to install anything, just click the chapter you wanna read on your screen. So okay, how to get on the internet. And yeah, this is the exact, at least it appears to be the exact same uh, thing that we took a look at in the booklet right here, which is not a bad thing. It's great that they've got it on the CD as well. Um, but if we go to, let me just open up the booklet here to the page where uh, this was at. Yeah, so let's go to step three here. Here it is right here in the booklet. So yeah, they've got uh, some of this stuff from the booklet. They might even have the entire booklet uh, right here. So all of these things right here that I that I pointed out very briefly before. These are the options on the sidebar, and you can see that they explain them here as well. So yeah, these right here are the same chapters that are in the book. So we took a look at how to get on the internet. Chapter two is exploring the web with Internet Explorer. Here it is, here's chapter two. Um, so yeah, this is just going to be a virtual version of the book, which like I said, is not a bad thing at all. So that was our first option here. The second option is connect to the web now. And this will, yeah, so this gives you the option to start the internet connection wizard, use MSN, AOL, CompuServe, or WOW from CompuServe. Try the internet extras. Okay, so this brings up an entirely new page here. It talks about what the internet extras are. So yeah, this is going to uh, give you the ability to install some of these additional tools. So net meeting, for example, you can install it, by clicking on this icon right here. So you've got internet mail and news. I believe it installed this. Uh, this is going to be your, yeah, it says right here, you may have installed this when you set up the Internet Explorer starter kit. Uh, so if you if you didn't install this, uh, you could do it from here. Comic chat. So this is pretty cool because it takes your online conversations and makes them appear as an interactive comic strip. So we'll install this. We probably can't really use this. I, I wonder if we could just open it up and check it out locally. Thanks for downloading Microsoft Comic Chat installation complete. To check this out, we have to close out of the program. Uh, at least can I press... Yeah, so I don't really want to end this right now, um, and I cannot access the... Actually, can I press Control-Escape? No, it just opens up this Tasks window. 
Uh, so yeah, unfortunate, but we'll just come back to this. We'll go through the rest of this internet assistance. So these are tools that, uh, that you can, I mean, they've, they've got assistance for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Access. I don't have Microsoft Office installed on this computer, but what these are, as you could probably tell from this, uh, they are tools that are designed to help you, uh, share documents from these programs, uh, on a web page. So for example, the Excel one, it says that, uh, the add-on wizard will provide Microsoft Excel users with the ability to create and distribute Excel documents online for viewing with any popular browsers. So it converts spreadsheet data into HTML format. Now, Microsoft Internet Viewers, these are really useful. Now, you might have used a program like this before. Uh, if you use Microsoft Office 2003 or 2007, uh, there was a version of PowerPoint, a very limited version of PowerPoint, called PowerPoint Viewer. And what that would do is it would allow you to view PowerPoint presentations without owning the full version of PowerPoint. So it was great for like if you wanted to send presentations to people or if you were presenting a presentation that you created and maybe the person's computer you were using to present it didn't have Microsoft PowerPoint, you could download the viewer for free and view the presentation. Well, this right here is the exact same thing. We've got a viewer for Microsoft PowerPoint, Excel, and Word, and it says right here, if you find an interesting Word, Excel, or PowerPoint document while cruising the web and don't have these programs, don't worry, these programs can view those documents for you, which is pretty great. You can install them here if you want to. Next up is Active Movie. So this is an ActiveX control that allows you to view uh, video and audio files without having to download individual programs. So it says the uh, the different formats that it supports right here, WAV, MIDI, AU, AIFF, MPEG, uh, sound files, and you can view MPEG video for Windows and QuickTime video files all within Internet Explorer. Pretty cool. Microsoft Hellbender. So what this is is actually a game. And honestly, as I've been going through some of this stuff here, uh, there's a lot of dedicated video potential for certain things. And Hellbender, we're not going to really be able to take a look at it in this video uh, for a couple of reasons. Well, because I would really want to showcase the multiplayer functionality of this game because that obviously ties into the internet. Uh, and we can't do that because, well, I don't have an internet connection on this computer and I don't have anyone else to play the game with. Uh, but it's pretty cool because if you had purchased this copy of Windows 95 and your friends also purchased the same copy with the IE starter kit, you guys could all play this game. I mean, this is not the full game. This is a demo. It's only a, a portion of the game or it's a trial. Uh, a little backstory about this game. This was developed by a company called Terminal Reality which was actually started by a uh, by a former Microsoft employee. But this game was published by Microsoft, and it's a sequel to a game called Fury 3, also developed by the same company and published by Microsoft. So yeah, that's a little bit about Hellbender, but we're going to take a look at what else we have to, um, to check out on this disc. So next up, we've got two ActiveX-related uh, items right here. ActiveX controls. You've probably heard of these before. You've probably seen those, those prompts when you go to a web page, like, for example, Windows update on Windows XP relied on an ActiveX control. So you would go to the web page, but you would get like a, a little prompt that would that would come up, it would kind of slide down from the top of the web browser, and it would ask you to run an ActiveX control. Well, this is a whole gallery of a bunch of, of different ActiveX related tools, and, and it just kind of is, is to showcase the power of ActiveX and what you can do with it. So it closes out of the Internet Explorer starter kit itself, and it opens up a web page in full screen. You can see we don't even have the start menu on screen. And it's in a, a very similar layout to the uh, Internet Explorer starter kit itself. And honestly, like I was saying, I could do an entire video on all of these in here because there's a lot to take a look at. The next thing is uh, ActiveX Control Pad. And this actually allows you to make your own ActiveX control to implement into your own web page, which is pretty neat. And again, I could do like a whole video, honestly, like a video dedicated to ActiveX and kind of going through the history of it. I mean, it could be like a whole retrospective video, honestly, and also showcasing some of these tools um, because there's, yeah, there, there's a lot of info to unpack. So like I said earlier, if there's anything in here that piques your guys' interest that you want to see showcased in like a dedicated video, be sure to let me know. And if a lot of you guys want to see that, I will look into doing a video on it. Next up is Surfwatch. Now, this might sound familiar to some of you guys if you saw my episode of time travel that covers Microsoft Plus for kids 
because this was included in that pack as well. Surfwatch, as you may be able to tell by what is on the screen here, it is a parental controls program. This is how you could, as a parent, restrict access to certain websites and also FTP servers, gopher sites, even Usenet groups and chat rooms uh, to restrict access to certain things that you don't want your kids seeing. So this would be really, really useful if you had them using your computer. Uh, and I go into more detail on this in that video if you want to go check it out. I'm sure we all know what true type fonts are. Well, there are some of them included on this CD and you could install them if you wanted to. Uh, it also says that some true type fonts may already be installed on your computer. It's definitely a possibility. But if you want to install all the ones contained on this CD, you could go into control panel, the fonts folder, uh, go to file, install new font, browse to this folder and uh, double click the font that you want. Pretty simple. And uh, yeah, true type fonts. We'll move on to personal certificates. So this entire section relates to security and cryptography, which is a, a very complicated subject and it would really take too long to really dive into in this video. But this talks about personal certificates. You've probably seen this very sign logo on websites before, like when you're going to check out, pay for something, you, you've probably seen the, this logo on the web before. So this talks about personal certificates and certificate authorities. Personal certificates are a way for websites to uniquely identify who you are and certificate authorities are a or an entity that will issue personal certificates to you so this explains how you could get your own digital id which would be required on certain web pages and uh, it just tells you how to use them now you could actually get a free one with this kit you could get a free class one digital id which normally is six dollars which is still pretty inexpensive you can also get a class two ID for half off, which they normally cost $12. So you could essentially get a class two ID for the price of a class one. And uh, so it just tells you, you know, how to enroll and it tells you how Internet Explorer uh, handles digital IDs. And it basically says that when you access a site that requires one, IE will prompt you uh, and just kind of let you know that, hey, you have to have a digital ID. Language packs, uh, this is how you can install additional uh, language packs to use with Internet Explorer. And these two options right here, Web Publishing Wizard and Personal Web Pages, really go hand in hand because they relate to uh, creating your own web page and getting it out there on the internet. So Web Publishing Wizard, this is a way for you if you had a web page on your computer to transfer it to a web server. And Personal Web Pages is a, this is a way for you to create your own web page and uh, get it published or essentially hosted through Virtual Servers Incorporated, which I tried to go to this web page and it doesn't go anywhere, so they might be out of business. This tells you how you can create your own web page and they will give you a free one month hosting plan essentially. So you could host your own website free for a month. Last but not least, we have favorites and uh, favorites are pretty simple. We all know what favorites are. Uh, they're commonly referred to as bookmarks. Internet Explorer likes to be a rebel and call them favorites. They're very useful because they provide quick shortcuts to your most commonly accessed web pages. I'm not really going to explain what bookmarks are because we all know what they are and we probably all use them. Uh, so there you go. This is the, and this is not everything in the starter kit. This is just the internet extras category. So we can go uh, back to the main page here. So let's take a look at the interactive demos. So these are demo pages. And what's really cool is like, these are actual web pages for sites like CNET. You've got windows95.com, Investor's Edge. You've got some entertainment related sites right here, International. And you even got Microsoft uh, sites as well. So these are going to be cached versions of web pages, essentially. So let's go to CNET here. So this will open up, man, yes, yeah, CNET.com. So this is probably just like a snapshot of CNET.com from sometime in 1996. And they've downloaded the, like, the entire web page. So we could go to news here. And this will take us to yeah news.com and we've got some news articles here including uh, this one posted bikini photos spur aol suit i wonder if it was bikinis 3.jpg you guys if you saw my uh, floppy disk 
testing video that'll that'll make sense to you. You could probably access this uh, because yeah, 1996 is the earliest year that the Wayback Machine, uh, when they started saving web pages. I don't know if uh, this specific page would be saved in the Wayback Machine, but it might be worth a look. So here's like CNET. I mean, this is like a legitimate CNET page, at least it appears to be, from 1996. I mean, that's really cool. I was not expecting the interactive demos to be actual web pages. Let's take a look at Windows95.com. Let's see what this was all about. Welcome to Windows95.com. The best Windows95 information drivers and shareware on the net. June 1996 release of the Windows95.com 32-bit shareware collection CD-ROM is now shipping. Uh, yeah, this would make sense. You have to order this. Let's go to Microsoft here. So let's scroll down here. Uh, Microsoft CarPoint. The smartest way to buy your next car. Could we, let's, let's search for like, let's search for a sports car. So let's pick uh, the Ashton Martin and okay, yeah, so that's just kind of what I thought. The feature you clicked on is only available through carpoint.msn.com. Uh, this is obviously where we would have to probably pull like pricing information and, and all of that stuff because this stuff is going to change, you know, from time to time. Uh, so this is not the, the, the entire site has not been downloaded uh, here, but we can take a look at, you know, the design of the website and you know some of the pages on it which is pretty cool uh microsoft internet explorer this is going to be the internet explorer website with activex technology learn about ie check out its hot features man so here is your gigantic feature set for internet explorer look at all the things it can do guys oh yeah we have to take a look at comic chat let me make sure to not forget that so yeah there's a few demo pages we'll go back to the main page here so we've already taken a look at the extras that's been the majority of this video online guide this uh okay this is what we were at yeah how to get on the internet uh yeah so this is essentially the digitized version of the book Connect to the web now is going to give you, yeah, your, I mean, we also saw this before. This is all your different uh, services you can use to connect to the internet uh, or just go straight through the connection wizard itself. Uh, explore the web. Uh, this would just launch the browser itself. And that is it, guys. So we'll launch, uh, yeah, you're about to exit the starter kit to browse the web live. Yes, let's do that. Now, interestingly enough, it still has the original logo there. Did you see that? It had this logo as opposed to the new one. This is one of the versions based on NCSA Mosaic, uh, licensed from Spyglass. I briefly touched on this whole situation in my uh, Netscape uh, retrospective video as well, if you want to go check that out. Uh, before we get out of here, though, I want to touch on um, the comic chat program because we saw this at the very beginning, but because we had to close out of it, uh, I just said we'll just touch on this later on. So we'll type in my name here. So it asks you to connect to a server, which obviously we cannot do. I don't even know if the servers are hosted for this thing anymore. My guess would be no, but we can work offline. So I've taken on the role of Anna. So here's Anna over here. And so what you do is, well, you just type a message, right? So I say like, hello world, and I press enter, and it basically takes my text and turns it into a comic strip, or at least a piece from a comic strip, which is pretty cool. And you can customize it down here, like you can customize her expression. Uh, so if you wanna like, so here's her laughing, you can say like, you know, ha ha. So there's that. And that's, that's really all it is. So here's like a more, like an angrier face. Yeah, so like this kind of looks like a sighing face, like, ugh, you know. Kind of cool, you know, a way to like chat with people, kind of giving off like a facial expression. Uh, pretty neat. It doesn't, like, I wonder if there are, are, are different characters, like, could I go to edit, view, mem or options maybe? But yeah, characters. So here's different characters. So you've got Armando, Dan, uh, you've got... Yeah, all sorts of, even like, you've got like an alien character here. Um, here's Lance. So yeah, you can like pick all these different characters. This is pretty cool. I've actually never used this program before. So yeah, there it is, guys. That is uh, Microsoft Comic Chat, and that is a in-depth look. Let's just close out of this here and not save it. Uh, at the Microsoft Internet Explorer Starter Kit. Like I said, this has a lot more content in it than I was expecting, 
But that's really great. So, guys, if you enjoyed this episode and if you want to see more like it, definitely be sure to give this video a thumbs up and get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And uh, if you guys have any video suggestions, anything in this starter kit that you want to see more in depth, maybe a full dedicated video on some of this stuff, be sure to let me know. But uh, I just want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.